Today we're doing Foundation Season 2, Episode 8. What did you think about this episode? Uh, I give it a 5 out of 10. Uh, some big problems I had. No Invictus update. There's no Foundation update. This has been a recurring theme. There's been no Foundation update in the show Foundation. Um, so that's been bothering me. Uh, the tech seems all over the place. Is Foundation's tech way outclassing Empire's tech? And then all of a sudden, it doesn't. And then we've got these weird dishes that come come online to suppress mentalic abilities. Like, well, what? Tech is all over the place. Um, the robot storyline is intriguing, uh, but the Gale Salvor mentalic storyline is dragging. It seems like, let's get, let's get the point. What are we doing here? Um, the story, the tension is starting to ratchet up, though, and I'm getting pretty interested in what's happening, and I want to know what happens next. Uh, as always, great production values and acting, so for me, 5 out of 10. What do you think? Give it 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10 is really good for me because the story is ratcheting it up. I like these story bombs, these, these mysteries just unraveling. I see the parts coming together. I love it. I like Tell Them. I like Tell Them now. She's got her cult, and I, I, I fucking call it, I fucking call it Metallics or a cult. But it's it's weird. It's weird that they see like Gail suffering on that table, and she's like, "No, I don't want to be taken over." And they're like, "We're okay with that." Like at some point, you got to realize like you're in the cult, right? You, you got to be able to see that. And we called it. We called it. We called it the Prime Raiden. Prime Raiden is quantum and tangled communications. We totally called it. We called it episode like two. We called it right away. And Demerzel, Demerzel was Cleon's forever empress. Ooh, that writing. Ooh, that that storytelling. I love it. That forever empress. Mm, it got me. Let's talk about today's episode. Let's get into it. Let's do it. All right. So I was a little. At, this is the beginning of the episode. I was a little mad at Rue for being careless. Well, let's just watch. Let's find out. <laughs> Shadow Master Silence. You're having me followed. So the answer is yes. I'm having you followed. This is my palace. <laughs> That's right. I'm also following. You. <laughs> I own the guards. They do what I say. I'm having you followed. You're, yeah. you're, you're, well, I'm listening to everything you do. I'm following your movements. I followed you before your ship was landing. Yeah, That's right. Every moment you're, you're under observation. That's right. I probably have people in Cloud Dominion looking at pe your people over there. That's right. Like, well, how is this surprising? That's right. And Rue. then Rue being, like, how is she getting snuck up on? That's right. She should have a little bit of awareness of, like, he's following me. That's right. She's like oh, playing all flirty fur. I mean, she, I mean, she probably wants him to follow. Him follow a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Then why show her hand with the Shadow Master tech? Literally showing her hand with Shadow Master tech. Right, she could just turn it off and be like, oh, I didn't hear you. A little flirt, flirt over the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weird. Rue being careless. It seems like the uh, Dawn, Day, and Dusk are programmed to say this mantra about Demerzel, which is pretty weird. It's creepy. Let's, let's, Interesting. Let's watch. Where did she come from, Dusk? She will always be here, as she always has been. Demerzel is a robot, the last surviving robot in the galaxy, and yet she sits as handmaiden to Empire. What is her real purpose? She will always be here, as she always has been. So the Cleons have been programmed to say this and not to think about Demerzel. Super weird. The program is the right word because it, it's like it's like he's trying to say something else, but he just can't. Like this is that's the line he has to say. Right. So somehow through genetics or something, memory alteration, something, something. It can't be just memory, right? Because he's inhibited from thinking about it. That's right. It's stronger than just memory. So and he has to say this same thing over and over again when questioned. Super weird. Also, why is Rue intimidating here? Yeah, what you doing bullying the, the Empire? Even if she attempted to bully the Empire, why would that be effective? He's like, shut up. You're literally my Empire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this is all my <laughs> Empire. This is my palace. Yeah. It says handmaiden to Empire. What is her real purpose? So her real purpose is shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. This is my Empire. What are you doing? What are you doing? How about you shut your mouth? And I don't answer your questions. Like, what is this? Why is she intimidating? Interesting, yeah. Rue is on Trantor in the Imperial Palace. Right. And she's not the she's not the empress to be. Like, she's just a handmaiden. She's like, like, yeah. She's just, just a She's person. just an enjoyer. She's an assistant. Right. Now, she's getting some fun times with, with uh, Dawn. But super, that doesn't super. mean he has to answer her questions. That's right. Super She weird. acts at his pleasure. 
I mean, the Simi Show. Yes, of course. That's his caring man. Is he? I think I think so. He always will be, and she he was there for all time. And <laughs> I mean, until she betrays him, and then then and then and, the and face capture, the thing. face capture thing. Yeah, yeah. This is on uh, wherever the Mentalics are. Mentalics I forget, world. Yeah, Mentalics I forget. World. I forget the name of it. They created these dishes to suppress Mentalics' ability. Let's watch. I'm not really here. See those dishes above your head? They're muzzles, tuned to cancel out your specific psychical pitch. That's a real bad sign that this planet full of Mentalics. So they're like, oh, we're about love and peace and taking care of each other. But they have these like internally suppressing devices. Mm -hmm. If you don't behave in line with the group, like they shove you in this hole and they suppress you, that's a real bad sign. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how a, do these things work? How do these things work? So somehow the Mentalics have an ability like telepathy, telekinesis, teleprojection, unthinking, et cetera, et cetera. They're just overpowered and they're like, you have a frequency with which your mentalic abilities right. work. We're going to suppress that. Like what? I think they, they did something with like those, those like um, little like, like um, Peruvian pipe things like do, 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 do. like each mm -hmm. person has that particular frequency. And so I think that each person has their like sound wave, so to speak, that like resonates well. And that's what they can, they, if they tune into that frequency, they can project out that power. And so if they have a particular frequency per person, then you find out whatever the noise canceling frequency is for that. You just pump in the anti-wave and I think that's what this thing is. Ah, that's like when I'm talking and I talk with a single frequency and if you have a speaker tuned to that, then I can't speak. I mean, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. It's just, I have a single frequency. That's okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Okay, 15 hertz. Oh, that's too low. What am I doing? Okay, okay, but, but this actually is exactly right. I think I did this in the laboratory once, right? If you can actually generate a pure sine wave, I mean, humans, when we speak, there's a bunch of different sine waves, very complicated. Mm -hmm. But if you were to actually generate like a purposely single frequency, then, then when one wave comes in, you just pump in the other wave and then they cancel each other out. You get a net total of superposition of zero. Right. Totally on board with the idea of, you know, destructive interference. Perfect. That's right. Um, however, like we have a single frequency. What's the field that's vibrating here? It's not sound, right? This gets worse the more I think about it. Like, where did they get that tech? That means these people are also tech geniuses because they didn't, they didn't hire somebody else. They didn't tell somebody else like, hey, we've got a colony of mentalics here that know how to do this. Like they would be exposing themselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless they, I mean, they get the technicians or the engineers and scientists okay. in. And then they do the, the work. They brain blast them. Brain the blast them. Get them in the cult, and then kill them with the unthink. Put them in that. Put them in that torture drowning chamber thing. Mm -hmm. And if these things ever break, well, they kill the people that made them, so they don't know how to fix them. All right, just don't break them. <laughs> but my question is, what what is vibrating? Because it's not sound, right? You, they're not doing unthinking with sound, right? They're not doing it with light. That's right. Because then you could, I mean, you could bring a set, you could bring a light sensor nearby and be like, oh, there's your frequency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're like an amber, an amber hue. So it's some kind of like thought brain field that yeah. perme perme permeates the universe and heals things and binds things together. That's the force. That's the force. That's the force. That's the force. So these are force jammers. Heck yeah. They're force jammers. Yep. Which I believe... In Heir to the Empire, one of the extended universe things, they actually, it's animals can uh, suppress right. the force. So they have dishes here. They have tech that can do it. Yeah. Super weird. It, it, now that I think about it, it is super weird they're able to have the tech. Yeah, like who built tech, it? Who designed tech. it? They have to know about metallics, how metallics work, and then build the devices. Where'd that come from? I mean, I guess they know how they work, but then they'd have to like translate that sufficiently well to somebody else so they could build the engineering to do this. That's right. Because people people were seeing things with their eyes. People were hearing things with their ears right. for 100,000 years. And they had no idea what was going on. That's right. It just, it just works. I know how to talk. But it's That's not right. like I could convert that into a microphone and a speaker. That's right. The engineering came on much later. Much, much later. Like within the past 100 years later. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah weird. Weird. This is Foundation. And it's interesting because it's like they have these whispered tech drives that like 
super advanced, super amazing, but then also their city is like, you still haven't set up your city. Right. There's no, this is not paved. This is dirt, dust, crap. Right. Um, and look at the sky. The sky, that looks pretty foggy, pretty mm -hmm. hazy. So maybe this is like their time of their year, their season mm -hmm. where it's kind of moist, kind of humid. There's got to be yeah. some moisture on the planet. Yeah. So now you get this like dust with moisture. That's just, that's mud. That's yeah. mud. Every time you got people walking into this like stores here, right. it's just dirty floor. Dirty mud on your clothes and you got to, oh. Got to get thing. someone to clean it up. Like right. it's, it's unsanitary. Like, and also like. Why? Actually, actually, okay, 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 actually, why don't they just build underground? Like, they leave these containers on top and then build their city underground. If anybody flies overhead, they're like, oh, this city's barely set up. But, like, actually, you got a whole underground base. It gives you, like, protection from radiation, from planetary weather stuff. It gives you protection from, like, people attacking you. It makes a lot of sense. I mean, whatever they do, whether it's underground or above ground, it should be done well because their tech is so good. That's right. Um, the thing that bothered me was the this uh, they still have the containers from the original ship. Like, come on, guys! Like, we can start building. Your population's growing. Get a little bit nicer stuff. Come on. Yeah. And then the the Harry Selden statue is still just like three D printed look to it. Like, get an artist on that. That's right. What, what are we doing? That's right. It's... They're, they're so strapped for manpower they cannot pave the grounds. They cannot. Fill in the little the little cracks on the three D printed stuff, and yet they created Whisper drives, which completely outclassed Imperial tech out of nowhere. Where'd that come from? Which most people won't ever pilot, <laughs> won't That's ever get to interact with. <laughs> Do some public works. There's some factories and R and D facilities somewhere here right. that is responsible for that. Like what the heck? Paved roads? No. Actually, I don't think we ever see where the Whisper drives are built. They just. They just exist. They just exist, yeah. Because this is this is not flight worthy area. Like I would not build a ship out here in the exposed dirt. It's like I can't have a clean enough environment for my mm -hmm. ship. Yeah. So there's a factory somewhere. Super weird. Weird. Thought this was a nice move by the Emperor to rope Sarath back into the fold of tyranny. The cleric or the girl? Perhaps. We let our future empress choose. Queen Sarath. That's some statecraft. That's some twisting mm -hmm. arms. That's like, she cannot, she's, she's getting folded into the bad stuff. She's no longer innocent saying, oh, you guys did the bad. No, no, you're involved in this mm -hmm. now. You're part of the family. That's right. And she can't just back out because she's in a public ar arena. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she has to participate. Now she's participating in the tyranny. I mean, just embrace it, Sarath. Just embrace it. Yeah, right? If she'd like spun around and like, both of them, are you not entertained? Yeah. Like, yeah. crowd would kill, go kill both. In fact, let's get the torture out here. Yeah. For all to see. Let's cut off their hands first. She, and everyone's like, ooh, she bloodthirsty. God dang. I thought I thought she was for us and your needs are our needs. But actually. But, but their needs, which is the, the, the needs of the people, is to not have these seditionists. So actually, it's true. Hey, as long as you as long as you spin it, spin it's okay. Spin it, yeah. She's like, cut their heads off and make them spin. She's, like, rah, 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 rah. She's DJing with their heads. People would love her. That's how that's how you make the public like you is torture. But it's a public show. It's the gallantry and beauty of the of the of the Thunderdome. Can't, can't argue with that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> This is weird. This is weird that the, the Foundation has this incredible tech and Trantor just left in the dust. Let's watch. Well, where, where's planetary defense? Exactly. Empire. What? So the Whisper Drives are able to... So this is Trantor. This is Trantor. This is the center of the Empire. The jewel of the Empire. They should have planetary defense. At all times, military on watch at all times, and the Whisper ship with the Whisper drive from the from the Foundation is able to bypass all of the defense and get right to where the Emperor is. Like what? Like they could have jumped on the Empire and just splattered into bits. I mean, this is like if an enemy of the United States was able to like put a military ship in New York Harbor. What? No, no, no. We need to have some warnings, like. Hey, something, ding, 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 somebody's coming up. Like some right. warning systems. Right. That would, but 
if they were able to bypass that completely, we'd be like, oh, shit, Ooh, we got to do something. Not good. Not good. Not good. So, but that, but it would be like if Vatican City pulled it off, you'd be like, what? 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 Did where you... did they make the what? That's right. Well, out of nowhere. Just out like... of nowhere. So, it's unbelievable to me that Foundation's tech is so far in advance of Empire's tech. Empire has trillions and trillions of people. Foundation has maybe billions on the outskirts of the galaxy. Wild. That's wild. And they have like thousands of years of like developing the home defense, like protect the home, protect the mm-hmm. empire, protect the emperor, the emperors. Right? And uh, yeah, just nothing. Just nothing. It gets, it gets worse. It gets worse. When, when we leave, like Hober leaves in a sublight ship. He doesn't jump away. Mm-hmm. He just flies away. So there's all this time where, where Trantor and its rings could be like targeting, 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 just none of it. it just flies no, away. Yeah, none of it. I guess if they were targeted, they would just use go to FTL right away. Didn't even have to. They didn't even have away. to. Where, where's the planetary defense? Where's the ion cannons and the rail guns? Where's the, like, you attacked our emperor, you don't fly away, no problem. That's right. You just fly away, no problem. Ah, it's like that other planet we saw. It's just once you get past the small arms fire. That's right. That's it. That's, that's it. <laughs> like, you're, you're, you're home free. I guess he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. My clock didn't we'll work. We'll get him next time. Take it out of the cowboy out. Like, Gosh, damn tune. <laughs> Wait, what? Is it? It's well. It's like <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it, it's it's like in a small mid small western town, they wouldn't have had all the proper defenses, the military outposts. So like, without if you get past our small arms, like you're gone. It, but like this, whereas like if you went to like a full on military base, they'd be like escalate to the next mm-hmm. level, escalate, escalate, escalate. We have much more at the ready than small arms. So so Trantor is one big mis- Midwest town, N- like old timey Midwest, like not even modern Midwest, like. Like, yeah, Trantor is not behaving like a big capital planet. Like, they should have layers and layers of defense. But instead, they're like, well, I guess he got away. See you later, Hober. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lock yeah. it down. The whole planet, ev- all the rings, everything around it, the moons, that all the planets in the system, lock it down. That's right, because Empire was just attacked That's personally. Right. Personally. Whew. And all three empires were there. Like, they could have wiped out the dynasty. That's right. And 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 Demerzel was there. Demerzel was there. It could have wiped out everything. Like you don't let that escape. That's right. But he's just moseying on out of the system. I'm Homer Mallow. More Mallow. <laughs> uh, this was confusing to me that if Empire marries Sarath, that she becomes second in line for Empire. Like just power. Immediately. She's not an empress regent. Seems strange. Seems very strange. You can dispense with day however you like. Wife and widow are both called empress. Like, like no, like no. I, I don't. I, I'm not super familiar with monarchy structures, but what, what would it be like? You get something regent. What I think that? it's queen regent or or so gentleman it, gentleman regent. I don't, I don't know what it so is. So let, let's say if there's like a prince mm-hmm. and then and then he's like prince of England and then the, the princess of France marries in, she can't just like assassinate the prince and be like, I'm the full queen now. Like, yeah, I think she cannot. The lineage would still go to their kid and That's she right. would be queen regent or something. Like she'd be in charge, but not officially. But right. like, it's, she's like placeholder for, is that how that works? I, I, I'm not super familiar either, but I, from what I understand from Game of Thrones, that the queen who marries the king is the queen regent and then if there's a queen and she marries i don't think he's called the king regent he's called like the gentleman regent or something hmm. but they don't have official positions within the line of succession as far as i understand otherwise i would just marry in kill the person and i've took over your empire taken over the whole thing just overnight right right so then that incentivizes the king or the queen not to marry because they're afraid of assassination That's which right. hurts the families who want to marry in so, this doesn't make any sense. I don't, <laughs> like, I don't why? Know <laughs> why? Why? What? Wow. So this would mean if Empire and Sarath actually do get married, Cloud Dominion comes in with assassins and and kills Think. the Emperor, and Sarath takes over, like officially, legally, like properly. Yeah. yeah. But no way. by sneak attack. By sneak Maybe attack. Rue just doesn't understand how it works. She's she like, might. She's like the, she, the the advisor, but she's like, this is how it works. Like, she, she actually, like she, actually you didn't read the documents. Like. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she's too busy messing around with uh, with dust. She didn't That's read right. like the paper. Paper. 
Josiah, Josiah's an interesting kid because like he spent the first eight however many episodes since we met the Metallics, he like shows up in inopportune times and he's like, mm-hmm. come to the cult, come to the cult. And then he does this. He's like out here by himself, like checking in on on, um, on Salvar, like hooking up food. Oh yeah, that's fine. Hooking up food, mm-hmm. you gotta eat. Is this how Tullum kills me? I hope that means Gale is still okay. They're getting her ready for the table. What table? Like scoping out, seeing if anyone was catching him. It's very special honor. I don't like the sound of that. I, something is really wrong in here. It's those. They can't scrape your pitch. It's like explaining they what the thing is. Mm-hmm. How do they work? What do those numbers mean? I don't speak numbers. Neither do I. Do some math, kid. Wait, what the heck? Like you're watching TV. How does the TV work? I don't know. I don't speak numbers. Like what? Like you can still tell me like. It does the thing, and then you yeah. can't think right. Yeah. All right. Like kid level understanding. Like, all right. Right. Like I don't when when, it, when I ask somebody asks how TV works, like I may not know all the details, but I can come up with something. I, I fill up on the whiteboard. I'm like, look, this is power. P equals I V. And they're like, like high level, please. Like don't break <laughs> down to basic electronics. Yeah. Josiah, the table where they're taking Gale. Where is it? In the palace. That way. Good. You're in here. Like this kid's suddenly so helpful. Like what happened? Like, like he's sneaking around to help with Sal- to talk with Salver and like tell her all the details and stuff. But every episode up until this point, every interaction, he's like, he's like showing up at bad timings and like shut down your conversation. Come be a part of the cult. And now he's doing this like secret stuff. What? This guy just switched sides. So it could be that, you know, he was faking it before, and this is real. Or he was real before, and this is a this is ruse. Ah, so something like tell him before was like send like he was being sent in by tell him before like I don't like the conversation. Tell him's like control the kid, go interrupt them, right? Mm-hmm. Or it could be now that it's like like go talk with Salvor because I I'm telling you. Yeah, so maybe this is the Mentalics way of just fucking with Salvor. Oof. Like he's, that would be he's good. like, is he friendly? Is he not friendly? I trust him, but I don't trust that him. That would be good. I don't know what's going on. Because if she doesn't trust him, and then they send him in there, and he gives like mm-hmm. he's like checking out, making sure like he's not getting caught. But actually, that's a part of it. Then Salvar's like, oh, oh, he's actually on my side now. And then she'll diverge, divulge her hand. That's right. That's clever. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. Yeah, Can't we're trust confusing him. the metallics. Super weird. Uh, so this is back on Foundation, I guess, in the vault. Harry describes Foundation One as the control group. I'm not sure that's what a control group is. It's not a chump, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very clever. A second Foundation. And if we approach all this as one great big experiment, which it kind of is, then that would make this Foundation the control group. A left hand blissfully unaware of what the right hand is doing. So first thing about experiments is they must be repeatable. True. This is not a repeatable thing. That's true. Because history happens once. That's right. As far as we know. You can't like set up humanity a million times, hit go on all of them and see, okay, where does it go? This is going to happen one time. The other thing is a control group is like, I have, I want to run an experiment. So I do a normal group that I can use to compare to a group where I change something Mm -hmm. so that I can make a comparison. I don't think there's any comparison happening between Foundation and Second Foundation. It's Second Foundation overseeing First Foundation. Right. Right? So it's not yeah. really a control group. It's two simultaneous experiments inside of one large experiment, but there's no control group. There's no, like, unaltered c- control group that's just doing this thing has no effects on the outside world. Mm-hmm. Like, no, no, no. The, the, control, the control group is actively interacting with the Empire. Like, it's not a control group. That's right, and second foundation will be actively manipulating foundation, which is not controlled. It, it, they're actively manipulating it. <laughs> maybe but, we maybe we should be running psychology experiments so we can just manipulate everything. Yeah, and just call one of them a control group. That's right. Anyone? I, I kind of give. I kind of give. Um, what's Harry? Harry. I kind of give Harry some leeway because he's a mathematician. Like he's not a scientist. Like, and that's that's not a dig or anything. It's just different skill sets. Like. Okay. His training is not in how to build experiments so that his hands are unaffected. 
his his ex, his experience and his skill sets are in doing math. Math and I guess psychohistory, which is you know part of his math thing. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I'm okay with like behavioral economics. Like that's math plus psychology a little bit in there, mm-hmm. but like that's different than being a trained scientist. Agreed. So he doesn't really know what one is. He's just saying stuff. Yeah, that's okay. Predictions are always right though. So all right, he gets it right. I mean, they say his predictions are always right, but... Well, his predictions are always right because he's always got something in his pocket and Dad explains why it's right. <laughs> just and always it, like, oh, well, I had a secret and, and that's why it's right. And if it wasn't <laughs> right, it was right all along. All along, because I haven't told you about the last part yet. Now mm. it's right. Yeah. This is weird. The Hover Mallow um, message comes from the future. Let's watch. This is after a conversation with Salvor, I think. Mm-hmm. So, so Salvor gets the message of Hobermallow from the vault, mm-hmm. and then she later on talks to him through through like the brain waves from from Mentalic's world, mm-hmm. and then she tells Harry of the past about Hobermallow. So that's that's a information that came out of nowhere. That's 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 a, that's a uh, like an information loop. Mm-hmm. That's one of these, one of these paradoxes. From, of yeah, if you have time travel where information springs out of nothing right there's no actual initial cause it it's it causes it itself mm-hmm. okay i mean yeah, okay i mean just along for the ride <laughs> it's a good it's a good time i mean if <laughs> if there's time travel introduced into a story the paradoxes come pretty quick yeah it, it so, is a problem so you know there's there's the grandfather paradox there's this information loop paradox there's a bunch of others probably, and it happens pretty much right away. So introducing time travel is a risky thing. I should say though, I wonder if Harry, or Hollow Harry in this case, is it built into psychohistory that he's like expecting information from nothingness? Like is it is it built into his plan? <laughs> like how can his plan possibly allow for that? I guess it the plan might allow for it. It's just, is it physically possible? I guess if he knows it's physically possible for information to spring from loops in time, then he can make some probabilistic statement about what kind of information and how often. Fuck, you saved it. Okay, yeah, that, that's right. That's right. So psychohistory <laughs> shouldn't allow for time loop paradoxes, but I guess if you can assign a probability to it that there's some chance that it might happen and it might be useful in a way, then... You can build that into your theory of psychohistory, and okay, I guess actually, yeah. actually okay, fine, yeah, fine, you maybe, got me. yeah. I mean, psychohistory isn't physics, so it's not worried about like what is or it's worried like if physics is this way, mm-hmm. just take those rules and put them in psychohistory. See what it does. See what it does. I don't it doesn't yeah. have to worry like is that philosophically okay? Like we, it doesn't care. Right. Just have some probabilities that happens. It doesn't. What does that? What happens out of that? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. You got me. Well done. Go ahead. Drive offline. So, so these whisper ships, super events, super awesome. But then these guys have their fun time, and then and then um, Bell Rios jumps in and he's like, "I shut it all down." So, so does the Empire have good tech or bad? As much. Spirit rising, stand down. You've been apprehended in the name of Empire. Tomorrow, brother, don't bother trying to jump. Your drives are offline. So he shut. So the drives are offline. All right, but then he kept the drives offline like bell rios is able to keep them offline from afar like you have control over the other people's ship like you're sh- so so the other way to say is the whistler ship is super advanced but also like defenseless like yeah. they so, can't keep other people out of the ship so this, so empire does have the tech to shut down foundation ships and turn turn their drives off but didn't use it in planetary defense weird weird, weird. inconsistencies of like who is powerful here? Who has good tech? I don't know. Right. So Foundation's tech outclassing Empire can breach planetary defense. Easy. We don't need the spacers. Don't need them. Easy. We don't even... Hober Mallow, he's kind of a doofus. He's like, boop, 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 boop. We're I'll going wherever we want in the galaxy. Navigation, no problem. No problem. Empire doesn't have any of that, but they can hack the ships. Like, That's what? Right. That's right. That's right. Turn off your Wi-Fi. What are you doing? That's right. <laughs> put a password on that super weird super weird being able to hack foundation ships is important for planetary defense if they never used it 
What? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> it's literally his expression right now. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So this is um, Rue and Dusk. They find, they like go through the artwork. Jesus. And, <laughs> and then they find this like massive chamber that like they walk down and you're like, what the heck is this? And apparently it's maybe a chamber from history that nobody's been in before. It was very confusing. Neat. Um, super cool. I think next couple episodes, we're going to figure out what's going on here. If I ever have a palace, I'm going to, I'm building tons of these like secret hideaway places. Hmm. And I'm also going to keep them super clean. I don't know how it's no dust in there. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe the, maybe that painting keeps dust out. If, if, if I ever take over a palace, I'll bring in a carpenter with a tape measure and make sure all the volumes make sense. Be like, uh, oh, there's a chamber here. Let's figure it out. Oh, there's another oh, chamber over here. Saying. All, you, yeah, all you need to do is a tape measure. That's right. They're like, <laughs> why is this like why is this room so big? Like we see a door here and a door here, but there seems to be a big, big empty nothing. Yeah, yeah. Let's go inside. Yeah. <laughs> Problem so solved. Palace is a hundred feet long. We've got two rooms of twenty feet and mm -hmm. then a huge like nothing. Like what uh what? Let's go check it out. If I ever have a palace, I'm going to have a bunch of those little tiny little robot vacuums. Because I don't want to be sweeping there. I don't want people walking back here. But then you'll figure out from the robot vacuum map, mm -hmm. that, like, there's a room back there. There's a room back there, yeah. <laughs> there's back literally there. a Roomba back there. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him did it. I heard your voice, Gail, calling out from Synax. This crackling intelligence just trying not to drown. It was me who planted the seed in your head that you should leave. That all came from inside me. I solved a Braxis. I. It doesn't matter now. T tell him is like the best gaslighter. You've got like best genius best. Gale, genius. you know, solving a Braxis. A like Braxis. She is mathematician on like a generational scale. Tell him's like, I did it. It's me. I did it. It's me. 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 I did it. Did you do it? No, no, no. I did it. Who gave you the idea to solve it? It's me. It's me. You didn't do it. You, you wanted to leave the planet? Well, I gave you a push. I gave you the idea to leave the planet. So all of your life decisions, it's me. Me. It's gaslight. It's unbelievable. A plus cult leader. Plus, this, how how could tell him like tell him had to know about the Abraxas conjecture like prize that and that Harry? Would Why would pull, she? Why would she know about that, that? That Harry would pull, you know, Gale from Synax to bring her to Trantor. She's like, how could she know any of that? Why, 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 she, she's not a math whiz, right? She's just keeping up with math literature and stuff just because she got hobbies i don't know her she does not have this hobby this is not, <laughs> no she does not have mathematician hobby yeah that's right nowhere in it she's like take only what you need taking only what you need has nothing to do with math nothing to do with math like you're leading a cult to tell him lead the cult but she's like i gave you the little idea Boop. Boop. that's me so everything you did in your life me i mean She's a cult leader. That's what that's what happens. That's what they do. <laughs> I mean, she's quite successful leading a cult. It's doing real good. Right. I mean, she's successful. Good is a separate thing. Yeah, that's good. Good point. <laughs> so all in all, the pieces are finally moving. We've been waiting, we've been waiting eight episodes, and they're finally coming together. Yep. Uh, how will Day deal with Foundation? We're still not sure. Foundation, like it's still a thorn in his side. What is he going to do in the coming episodes? Oh, I was trying to cue to you. To, I, got, I wanted to do the last one. Okay. Uh, we are at... L let's, let's just restart the outro. At 3.36.30. Okay, let's put outro. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here we have it. At the end of episode eight, the pieces are finally moving. We've waited seven episodes of build up, build up, build up, and things are finally coming together. Yeah. Still, Day hasn't dealt with foundation yet, though, so we don't know how that's going to go down. Kind of waiting to see how that's going to... What's going to happen there? Um, Hober Mallow versus Bel Rios. What's going to happen here? You know, we know Hober Mallow is now prisoner of Bel Rios. How's that going to go down? And what's going to come together for Day versus Don versus Dust versus Rue versus Sarath versus Demerzel? It's every piece is at play. What's going to happen? What's going to shake out? Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Catch you next time. See season next time. nine. Season episode nine. Two. Season two. No, I got it wrong too. Season two. <laughs> season two. <laughs> episode nine. That one. See you then. Yeah.